On the stock tab of the PrintQuote Pro setup, you can manage all your paper and card stock. To add a new stock item, click on Add Stock button. Enter your stock name, supplier, colour, weight, and there's two rates, end rate and second rate. These can be used for the bulk rate, the pallet rate and the cut rate. Enter the dimensions, length and width of the sheets and click on the appropriate radio button depending on whether they are sheets or roll of stock. If you're using stock control, enter the notification quantity that's the quantity you wish to be notified once the level of the stock has been reached and add the actual quantity in stock the date it was stocked and the cost of the stock once you've entered the information click OK to save it To modify a stock item, first select it and click the Modify button. If you haven't got stock notification activated, then the bottom section of the screen won't be visible. Make your changes to the click OK to save them. You can also double click on the item. Click OK to save it. You can also, using the control key and clicking on records, select records and make them the current selection by clicking the Use button. Clicking the All button makes all stock items the current selection. To delete a stock item, first select it and click the delete button. You'll be asked to confirm the deletion and click yes to delete the item. The search button enables you to search the stock base database by stock name, weight, length, width, range of end rate, range of second rate, stock type, and if you've got stock notification active, whether any stock are at critical levels. You can search all records in the file or just the current selection that's on screen. Type in your criteria, click Do Search. The number of records found will be displayed at the top. Click Show to make them the current selection. When printing no carbon required NCR pads or docker books, you'll be working with sets of NCR stock. The average button enables you to combine various pieces of stock to make up a set. The price is average and the print job is calculated as if the pieces in the set are at the average price. To make up a set, hold down the control key and click the stock items you wish to include. Then click the average button. A dialog box will open asking you to rename the stock. Once you've named that and clicked OK, you will be then asked how many of each sheet of the three sheets you wish in the set. In this case we're making a triplicate set so I only need one of each. Then there's three sheets that we've used to make up the set stock along with the new stock item will be displayed on the screen. If we double click on the stock item to modify it, we'll see in the colours, we'll see 
the combined colors of the set. If we click Combo Details, we'll see a list of the stock used to make up the set. And now that stock is available to be used in jobs. And you'll notice that the rates have been averaged. The Check Combo Stock button, when clicked, checks all the NCR combination stocks in the stock file to see if the stock items used to create them are still there. When you click the button, the combination stocks are reconciled and a dialog box will open displaying a list of any of the combination stocks that have had any of their component stock items missing. Then we can select those by clicking on the select button. They become then the current selection. Click the import button to import stock items from other data sources. The file must be a text file and have no more than 13 available fields to import into the stock data file. And these are the stock name, cost, end rate, second rate, length, width, roll length, weight, colour, per number, notify quantity, actual quantity and supplier. If necessary you can open the text file into Excel and check if it has the correct number of columns and each of the columns has a heading so they are not confused with the different rates or width and width when importing the data. If you do open it into Excel do not forget to save it as a text file with tab delimiters. Our text file has been opened into Excel and we can see all the values. Row 1 is the column titles And now we can click select file and select that file. first row is the column titles displayed in the file fields. Now we can double click or select items and move them to the import fields item column. Then once we've selected all the fields we're going to import the stock into, and they're all correct, we can now move on. First row is column titles, so we select that so the column titles aren't saved into the database. 
You can also choose whether to update existing records. In other words, if the stock comes in with the same name, it'll update the stock. Otherwise, it'll add them whether they have the same name or not. Fields have inverted commas qualifier. Sometimes from some databases each field will have a qualifier. If it's got qualifiers this one doesn't but if it did we would have to select that to remove the qualifiers. The field delimiter is by default a tab but we have other options. The record delimiter is by default a return but also there's other options. And now we've set up all the parameters. We click OK to import the stock records from the text file. Two stock items were updated and five stock items were added. We click OK and they'll be made the current selection. PrintQuote Pro will also keep track of your stock usage. To set up this feature, you select the Automatically Check Stock Quantities checkbox. When the Automatically Check Stock Quantities checkbox is selected, a checkbox, drop down menu, and other buttons required to manage the stock will become visible. Each time a job reaches the process that has been set up, in the update stock quantity process drop down menu the stock quantity will be automatically reduced by the amount of stock used in a particular job when the process has been updated in a job on the production tab So if we select completed, change to current process, we'll be asked if we wish to update the stock quantities. Now we've got stock management chosen. Now the stock quantities have been updated. Process status of a job can also be set when the current process in the job schedule list is modified. Simply select a job and here we can also update the current process that's in the job schedule list. If the majority of your stock items are to have the same notification quantity you can click on the set notification quantity and automatically set the notification quantity of the current selection of stock items simultaneously. We can also search or select by holding down the control key and clicking on stock items. Smaller selections we can apply this to so we can apply different notification quantities to different stock, stock items if we wish. For this purposes we'll do all the stock items. So now we're asked for those. Then any stock items are in roles will be asked to put in a length for roles as a default length.
and what will happen the stock items that are below that that notification quantity will be displayed in red and this is where we can use the select stock at critical levels so there we have 31 items out of 176 that are, all have quantities below their notification quantity If there are stock items you do not want to include in the notification process, then set their notification quantity to zero. So if we pick a stock, box board LG, we set the notification quantity at zero, click OK, we ask when you're updated. And now it's been removed and will no longer be notified when that reaches any level at all. The critical stock notification on startup checkbox. If that is selected, you'll be alerted of any critical stock levels and be able to print out a stock list when Print Quote Pro starts up. So we'll select that, save that. As a preference, quit Print Quote Pro. Then open Print Quote Pro. And there the critical stock notification list has come up. And from here, we can print a stock list. Click on the print stock list, choose a preview order, we can print it without previewing it or we can export it in various different formats. Click OK, printed dialog will come up, then click OK. And the stock order will be compiled, ready for you to print it out and send to your provider. Clicking the print stock order button will open a dialog box where we can print a list of the current selection or just the critical stock items and we can preview the report or print it directly. So we'll choose to preview the order. And that's re produced a report of all the stock items in the current selection. When the job process is updated in the job and reaches the process stage where the stock usage is to be updated, that is the process indicated in the update stock quantity job process drop down menu, a file stock used is also updated and you can print a report of the stock usage by clicking on the print stocked used report and this report will list the job name and what stock was used in each of the print items in a job when we print the print stock used report button a dialogue asking you to select the date range of jobs will be displayed so we can select a date range and click OK.
then we choose the print and click OK again. And the list of all stock used to a current point in time will be displayed and can be printed. So we have the date, the job number, the job name, the stock that was used, stock type, sheets or rolls, weight, length, width, roll length and the quantity. We can also click on clear stock used and that will clear all those details in the used stock report. And again we've got the check combo stock button which will automatically check all the combinations of stock for our NCR and see whether any of those sheets used in the combinations of missing or deleted. 